I am back with another book review, and this was a really, really awesome book. Um, it hit home for me, I guess you could say. Uh, I've been reading a lot of young adult literature lately, and um, I don't really see the difference between young adult lit and like adult lit, especially since I'm taking like a young adult lit course in school right now. I've been reading like a lot of um, books that are geared toward like middle school reading lists and whatnot, and I've actually read already a lot of those books. But the book I'm reviewing for you today is a relatively new book by an author who I hadn't heard of before. Uh, she has certainly marked her place in my heart with this book, The Treachery of Beautiful Things it's by Ruth Frances Long. By the way, the cover is absolutely gorgeous. I don't know, you can see that uh, beautiful cover art for the book jacket. I guess I should say that the reason why this hit home for me is because the genre, well, it's fantasy, but there's also the aspect that it's a fairy novel, and honestly, I haven't read too many of those in my lifetime, in spite of my obsession with the lore behind it. The novel I'm writing, I've said before, I think, but I, I, if, if not, I'm revealing it now, it is a fairy novel. Uh, nonetheless, this novel is through and through an old-fashioned fairy novel. Um, it uses a lot of the staple, like, names and concepts as far as, like, uh, the elements and rulers of realms and guardians and things like that. I actually heard about through a, another book review, so it's like book review inception over here. I had to pick it up because it just sounded really good. And so I picked it up, keeping in mind that I wanted to have a literary outlet for the things I want to read, and this book certainly proved true to be like all the hit all the sweet spots in like what I look for in a good novel. But also, I wanted to kind of study up on my own genre. This novel is it's it's a typical um, fairy tale in that it's about a human girl who wanders into the realm of fairy. The main character's name is Jenny, and she. Uh, the the, pr the premise of the book is that her and her brother are, you know, they're just ordinary kids and they're like living in, you know, a small town that has a forest near it and her brother, Tom, is a child prodigy with the flute. He's, he's a musical prodigy and Jenny is a little bit jealous of him but not too much. She, she admires him a lot but her whole family is always uh, like practically worshipping Tom, saying, oh, he'll go so far, and Jenny's just kind of like left in the shadows. And one night when uh, they're going home from one of his music lessons, uh, he he's playing the flute near the woods, and a creature made out of the earth itself comes and snatches him up and drags him into the wood. Then, and Jenny is left alone. And seven years pass, uh, in which Jenny goes through like therapy and stuff, and she, it was a traumatic experience for her, and her family, it's hinted that her family blames her, and it's just like a mystery that has torn everyone she loves apart. And in her like ongoing quest of hope for like finding her brother, um, she happens to stumble upon the realm of fairy when wandering into the wood one day. And that may be her call to action, but once she gets into the realm of fairy, she discovers that there's much more, of course, to the reason why her brother was snatched, and that this was meant to be that she would wander in. Within the realm, she meets the guardian of the edge, uh, which is the portal between the, f the fairy forest and our world, and his name is Jack. And he is kind of an enigma, he's, um, he's kind of, he's impulsive, he's... He go, comes and goes like the wind, and yet, uh, you know, there's a chemistry that develops strongly between him and Jenny. I, I thought that, I really, really, really thought the characters were strong in this novel. I could, the, the physical descriptions and just the, their voices were very clear in the text. Uh, Jenny was a strong protagonist. She had an air, very much an air of innocence about her, which plays into, uh, the story very much so. And uh, Jack is mysterious and he's a little bit flighty sometimes and he, he doesn't he doesn't he's not straightforward with the truth but he's always he, he's very heroic at the same time. There's also a lot of a lot of the characters are named after uh, traditional fairy tale folklore names 
which actually goes back to like Shakespeare, like A Midsummer Night's Dream by Shakespeare, because we have Puck, which is Jack's um, little hobgoblin assistant, and King Oberon and Queen Titania, who are kind of like the antagonists that are on opposite sides. And that actually reminded me a little bit of the novel Stardust, which I haven't reviewed yet, but it is my favorite Neil Gaiman novel, and pretty much my favorite novel of all time in that there's like the prince and the queen and they're struggling for the star. It's kind of like that. This novel renewed the folklore which is uh, traditional in fairy tales and in classic literature and even theater. And there are a lot of twists and turns and it gets really epic toward the end. Anyway, I definitely recommend this, not just to young adults but to any age who wants to read it or who's interested in fantasy or fairy tales. It's strong storytelling with not too many cliches but enough classic elements that, so that it will be recognizable and timeless, I think. Pick it up. It's only in hardcover now, but uh, I like the hardcover. But yeah, The Treachery of Beautiful Things by Ruth Francis Long. And with that, I will hopefully go do something epic.